Many of you have visited Tower of London, but have you done the Yeoman Water Tour? In this video, I'll show you clips of a Yeoman Water Tour during a recent visit to the Tower of London following the Super Bloom event. Coming up next. Hi, it's Ken, and welcome to my channel, Ken Travels 360. Last month, I went to Tower of London to visit it and see the Super Bloom. I made a video about the Super Bloom, which you can watch after this video if you haven't watched it yet. It's now time to check out Tower of London itself. Here you can see a bear in front of the entrance. So the story was that King Henry III received a polar bear from the King of Norway uh, and an elephant from the King of France in the 2050s. The polar bear was allowed to swim in the river on a strong rope, but other creatures have less freedom. This is the Traitor's Gate. It's the grandest and most notorious river entrance to the tower. If you want to do the Yeoman's Waters tour, then the last tour is 15.30, so make sure you come here in time for that. However, I was told I could join in late on this occasion. Behind you, this side, and it's the Bywood Tower, derived from the from by the Lord and by the Word. As every day as it was. So, the human just explained uh, when you enter the tower, you have to pass the word uh, through the window, and if it's correct, they will open. Hence, the word password. Okay, so, actually, this is the place you uh, pass the word. 50 feet high, the wall that you're stood behind is 28 feet thick. I said the building that housed them in were known as casemates. They're now the accommodation for yeoman warders like myself. So I just live up that street there. So did everyone know we live here? No? Some did know? Mm. Some didn't? Who doesn't care? <laughs> okay. okay, so we live there. You look there and then you see the arrow slits on the wall for windows and the top floor has windows fitted. Those windows have been recently fitted. Recently, I mean about a couple of hundred years ago. Okay? So, both both prayer chambers held prisoners. Yeah. Okay then. So we're now standing at probably the most famous and infamous gate in the world, and this is Traitor's Gate. Built under the orders of King Edward the First. And they required a safer and more useful entrance into the tower. So rather than travel the narrow winding streets of London, where convoys could be attacked, stores stolen or prisoners set free, they'd rather use the River Thames as a highway where a high tide boats could come down come through those gates and unload their cargo safely. Therefore it was originally called the Water Gate. So you American people, we had it before you as well. Okay? <laughs> okay then, behind you then, that side is the Wakefield Tower. Derives its name from one William de Wakefield. And it was the clock to King Edward III. What I'd like to take away about the, this tower then, two parts of it, the bottom chamber then. In there, hundreds of Yorkist prisoners were crammed in there and just left to die after the War of the Roses. All right, so it is a depiction now of a torture chamber. Um, it was called the Tower of Blood, or Bloody Tower, during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Of London, and here's another. The ravens have been here before the tower was built, nestling in the trees and later on in the forest. And as superstition goes back to the reign of King Charles II, that if the ravens should ever leave the Tower of London, the White Tower will crumble to dust and the monarchy will fall. So, to prevent that happening today, we maintain an establishment of six ravens. And because we're not superstitious, we have another two hidden away somewhere. <laughs> All right, they're looked after by a gentleman called the Raven Master, Mr. Chris Scape. He's been here about 17 years. He's one of the senior members of the young body. And he, he feeds the ravens every morning, and then they're let out to roam around. And then brings them in on an evening, he cooks them in with food. So behind you then, or behind me and in front of you, is Williams Norman Keep, known as the White Tower. And it's the largest tower here in the Tower of London. Fabulous. Ah! But if you, if you look on top of the turret then, you'll see a crown in gold leaf. 
beneath of which you see a weather vane showing the royal standard. And that's to know that this is still a royal palace but no longer a royal residence. So never lose sight of the fact that all our kings and queens lived in there for well over 500 years. served over 22 years in the military. You have to be the rank of a sergeant major and you have to have a long service good conduct medal. Then you can apply. I applied last September after doing 35 years in the military. When I came here, they give you a book on history. Read that. I don't just have to read it, I have to memorize every word of it because then I get tested six months later by the governor of the Tower of London. And if I can recite it properly, I stand on these blocks Everyone you've seen, I stand on these blocks and I recite it back. If I say it properly, I then get a house. I now have a house in the Tower of London. You then get sworn in over there on Tower Green as a member of the Yeoman body. And we have a toast with our silver goblets with your name and number on it. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And our toast is, may you never die a Yeoman warder. So what would happen years ago? I would sell my Yeoman warder job to you, sir. You would give me a purse of money. And that would be my pension for me and my family. If I died before that happened, my family would be destitute. So there's the toast, may you never die, you were warder. We've been here since 1485, but we were formalised in 1826 by the Duke of Wellington. So the first Yeoman Warder recorded is John May in 1826, Yeoman Warder number one. I'm Yeoman Warder 412, 412. There's only ever been 414. So more people have been to space than there has been Yeoman Warders. <laughs> Okay, once I've sworn in there, I then get sworn in at St. James's Palace as a member of Her Majesty's Royal Bodyguard. So we've been here at the Tower, like I say, since 1485, and our main job was to guard prisoners and guard the kings and queens. People say, why are you called beef eaters? No one knows, it's not recorded. But they think it's because when we stood guard with our partisans, which are spears, at the king or queen's table, when they left, we were paid in the food that was left. And sometimes it was beef. Beautiful servants wouldn't get it. Quite jealous, sometimes they say those beef eaters the beef. But it's not recorded anywhere. That's been a fascinating Yeoman Water tour. The whole tour is 45 minutes long, so I've only selected clips of highlights here. Now let's continue to explore the rest of the Tower of London on our own. So, um, the Yeoman also told me that, uh, well, they told everyone that, um, the kill for uh, the crown jewels, normally uh, there will be uh, early in the day, there were like one and a half hour kill, but now it's totally empty. So it's definitely worth checking it out now. Let's go. Ah, I just remember that there is no photography or videography uh, in there. So I'll see you on the other side. Outside the crown jewels, there are more royal beasts. Right, after uh, looking at the crown jewels, let's uh, walk around the battlements, like the ramparts. The crown jewels are really amazing. I definitely recommend going in to see them. So it looks like we have reached the end of the Battlewoman's walk. It's time to get back done. I'm sure that the Tower of London hasn't rearranged things, but I don't remember it uh, so beautiful with the Tower Bridge behind, the White Tower. Maybe I have come on a very sunny day, but it just looked quite amazing to me. Okay, let's visit the Fusilier Museum next.
There are disputes about the role the Fusilia play in different wars: the American War of Independence, the Napoleonic Wars, the Crimean War. In the afternoon sun, the Crown Jewels building is looking really magnificent. So it looks like the White Tower is uh, the Royal Armouries. Let's go up. This is how the Tower of London looked like when it was first built. So I'm inside the White Tower, the Royal Armouries. Uh, lots of horses, uh, armor, display. Probably seen a lot of these in uh, palaces in all over Europe already, but it's still quite interesting. So here we have the Chapel of St. John inside the Tower of London. Something's quite weird here. It looks like an armored dragon. Okay, let's visit the Chapel of St. Peter at Vincula. So, we have seen most of the attractions in Tower of London now, so I will conclude the visit here. If you enjoy watching this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching this video. I'll be visiting the Super Bloom again very soon, so do make sure you subscribe to my channel. At the end of the White Tower, there are souvenir shops. I wonder how much these teddies cost. Bloody hell, 15 quid.